Welcome to part 4 of our tutorial series on how to apply custom visual designs in Moss. In this part, I will give an overview of the base master page that Imagination created for use with Moss websites. We took ideas from Microsoft's base master page as well as Heather Solomon's base master page to create our own that works best with the Moss sites that we've been skinning and styling. The base master page includes all the components necessary for a Moss site to render properly but the layout and design elements have been removed. This allows for a blank canvas where we can incorporate the design elements from our HTML template. It is useful to know which components have been left in the code for our base master page. These include required components, optional components, and hidden components. One required component is the accessibility feature in Moss. We have placed comments around this code in the master page. It is best to leave everything within these comments intact. The admin bar is also a required component. This includes the side actions menu and the page editing features. We have put comments around this area of the code as well. Here is a screenshot of the admin bar. Admin bar is not an official term for this area. We just started calling it that after we moved these elements to the top of the code in our base master page. It was a simple way to contain these editing features and move them outside of the design. The main content area is also a required component in the master page. The content placeholder called placeholder main is absolutely required for the page layouts and web pages to function in Moss. This area of the code includes a named anchor associated with the accessibility features that I mentioned earlier. Here is a screenshot example of the main content area in a custom Moss website. The Web Part Properties Editor positioning code is also a required component in our master page. It is simply a div tag that triggers where the Web, web Part Properties Editor will appear in the browser when activated by a user. We have added a class name which corresponds to the positioning style in our base CSS file. Again, we have added comments around this area of the code. Here is a screenshot of the Web Part Properties Editor as positioned with the code in our base master page and base CSS file. Some optional components have been left in the base master page code. This includes the Welcome, My Site, and My Links text links. For an outward facing website, these links are often not used so this area of the code may be removed. The main navigation control is still present in our base master page, but it may be removed if you do not need to use this control. You may wish to use additional components that are not currently available in the base master page. Two components that we use often are the quick launch menu and the breadcrumbs control. You can find the code for the Quick Launch menu in the default.master file in the Master Page Gallery in SharePoint Designer. The breadcrumb control does exist in the base master page. It has just been hidden with other elements near the bottom of the code. Those hidden elements have been placed in a div tag in the bottom of the code with the style set to display none. These elements include many content placeholders which correspond to the layout of a default Moss design. We cannot remove these content placeholders completely because the default page layouts rely on them to render the page. It is best to leave them inside the hidden div tag. You could also use a hidden ASP.NET panel control to accomplish the same thing. So that is the overview of our base master page code. In the next part of our series, I'll demonstrate how to use the base master page to create a custom master page in Moss.